the hold in is over in Seattle, at least for one of the players who is present and wanted a new contract and hadn't gotten a new contract and wasn't practicing and things were getting a little tense. They still have the Dwayne Brown situation to deal with. They at least got the Jamal Adams contract under control. It's over. It's done. It was a little hairy there for a while. We'll talk more about that in a second. But the bottom line is a year after the Seahawks gave up multiple first round picks to get Jamal Adams, a top 10 pick back in 2017 of the Jets. And the Jets decided we just we're never going to be able to make this guy happy. We're never going to be able to give him the contract he wants. The Seahawks. A year after the trade, they give him the contract that he wanted, or more accurately, the contract that he eventually would accept. Highest sure. paid safety in football. It's a four-year, $70 million extension, $17.5 million in new money. When you add it to the $9.86 million he was already due to make this year, it becomes an average of $15.97 million at signing either standard, the richest contract for a safety in NFL history. Still not... As much as he would have wanted, but right. hey, at some point, you got to step off of what you want. You got to take what you can get. And it was smart for Jamal Adams to take the final offer because when you're a safety who plays the way he does, the last thing you want to do, Chris, is go year to year. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I think that's the point. That's where I'm happy for Jamal Adams. I mean, as you know, I know him a little bit, but like, hey, he's a safety He's a Hall of Fame caliber talent type safety. We've heard Rodney Harrison say those same things to us on Football Night in America and all of those type of things. And he's a perfect fit for the Seat for Seattle and their culture there. Seattle's good at, you know, managing defensive, we love football type of psycho guys like Jamal Adams. So he fits them, they fit him, and I think that is where I am happy. I mean, you know, again, Jamal Adams, like you said. You know, it, it's a violent way or violent style of football for the way he plays the game. He he doesn't back down from anybody. He throws his body around. He's as fast as they come. You know, we showed all those safeties up there on the list. You know, again, and maybe Kristen, if you can put them up again as far as the yearly paid salaries. Like, yeah, the, the, you know, yeah, I expected him to get more. But what I'll say too, like. You know, to your point, once again, Jamal Adams compared to all those guys there, and that's no disrespect. But to me, Jamal Adams and Buddha Baker play a kamikaze style of football where, you know, Jamal had to have that in the back of his mind that, listen, I, I don't know how long I'm going to go if my body breaks down, whatever. Uh, and I'm just glad he took the deal, got his money, and, and now we can see him on the field with the Seahawks. If Jamal Adams' agents were to see this graphic, they would strenuously object because yeah. agents value contracts based on new money. And if you look at it that way, it is $17.5 million. But, but Justin Simmons' deal was signed from scratch. It was an expired contract. Right. So 1525 is his true average salary, new money, total money. So... It is a little apples to apples there. It's it's a controversial subject because the agents always want the new money to be the number because it's always higher because you always replace the years that are remaining with new years that are worth more money later and people get pissy about it. Sorry, London. That's the first time we've apologized what? to London. I don't yeah. know that pissy's a problem, but they do get pissy about it when you start putting up numbers that are lower than the numbers that they're trying to broadcast far and wide because the agents want to take these contracts, Chris, and leverage them into new clients. That's the way it works. No now, with with uh, with Adams, here's here's what happened because, and I had a feeling this was going to happen. Yeah, we kind of break, talked the, about this on Monday a little bit, I think, where you're going. Sorry, go ahead. The Seahawks had gotten exasperated with Adams' demands, and they made their final offer, and their final offer sat for a week and a half, thereabouts. And that's it. This is our deal. $70 million, four years, $38 million guaranteed at signing. That's it. That's all we're doing. And once the Seahawks decided – this is our offer. Okay, if he doesn't take it, then we're just going to do one year at a time, franchise tag. Next year, franchise tag the year after that. We're content to do that. It would have been about $39 million over the next three years that he would have made. We're, we're fine to do that. And then that's when it started to get a little dicey because Adams camp made it clear, right. I'm told by multiple sources, even though they would object to that now, and I 
I heard that directly yesterday, frankly. But Adams Camp took the position of, well, if you franchise tag him, he's a linebacker, not a safety, and that would have driven the numbers up. And they, they had this stare down for a little bit. But at the end of the day, and, and there's, no, there's no shame in this. At the end of the day, Adams decided, I'm taking the Seattle final offer. Yeah. So, I mean, Seattle got to the point where they said, that's it. We're done. Here's where, and and I'm I'm told they were going to pull the offer. Now, you and I had said the other day they should just leave it on the table indefinitely and one of these days he's going to say I better just take that offer. They were going to pull the offer. I don't know when, but they were going to pull the offer and that contributed to Adams. As he explained yesterday, his mother called him multiple times and said take the damn money. And it's the smart advice. Yeah. Mom always knows That's best. Right. It's the smart advice when you play the way you play. Get the guarantees for injury now so you can go out and play football the way you always have and not worry about getting yourself injured and never getting paid. Yeah, well, and mom was married to to dad who had a career-ending injury, right? So, I mean, again, that had to be in the back of his mind during this whole process. And, you know, I I understand. I'm glad they found common ground because I do think, you know, Jamal Adams, as far as, like, that list is concerned, as far as the money – yeah, he could have got a noticeable, even a more noticeable jump than that right there. So they'll both be able to say, hey, new money, I am noticeably higher than everybody else. But, of course, yes, it's a, it's an extension to a degree because he had that one year left, and that lowers the number. So I'm glad they found that common ground because, you know, one, I love watching Jamal Adams play. He fits the Seattle mantra and, and what they want up there with Pete Carroll football. And then all the damn things he does on the defense. I mean, he might have had an argument for the linebacker thing. Like, no joke. But first off, we haven't seen a safety be as, as successful as a blitzer as Jamal Adams really in NFL history. These plays right here, he's a free safety just running people down. Now he's playing the zone. Wait, got a good feel, realizes the quarterback's out of the pocket, runs them down, tackles them. I mean, it's always a violent down right away type of hit, right? And then here, this is not like necessarily uh, a great play for Jamal Adams, but I wanted to show this just because, you know, some of the positions they put him in at times. That's Cole Beasley. That's Cole Beasley. This is how important Jamal Adams is to the Seattle Seahawks. He covers slot receivers man-to-man. He plays linebacker. He's one of the best blitzers in football. And that's why I'm glad to see him out there with the Seahawks, who we know are a playoff contender for sure, maybe a Super Bowl contender. And uh, just happy for him and the Seahawks that they got it done. It's a phenomenal football player. And uh, I don't know if he would have won that franchise tag argument, Mike, but, but nonetheless, he's got something to argue there uh, altogether. Well, and here's what it would have done. It would have hovered over the entire 2021 season because right. the argument would have been resolved based upon where he was positioned, what position he was playing this year. Not last year, not the year before, not any time prior to this year. So now you have introduced into your effort to try to win as many games as possible this this little thing of, oh, boy, if we if – we, if we drop him down into the box too often, if we yeah, put him on the edge right. too often, and see with linebacker, there is an outside linebacker or inside linebacker under the franchise tag. So anything, if you get up into the front seven anywhere, that counts as a linebacker snap. And I just don't think the Seahawks wanted to go there. And and at the end of the day, the threat, the promise, the vow, whatever, didn't do much. I'm told there were some cosmetics that were added to the back end of the deal just as a little face saver. Look at the, hey, Pete Carroll said all the right things yesterday. No one's going to rub Jamal Adams' face in the fact that he capitulated when the time came because it was the right thing for him to do. As you mentioned, his dad's career was cut short due to injury. Adams specifically said that yesterday because he got on FaceTime with his dad and pointed out his his career was cut short by injury. That is a, that. That is a, a concern for everyone who plays in the NFL, but especially right. a guy like Jamal Adams. If you're a quarterback, you can play the year-by-year game. But like Dak Prescott did, and, and he suffered a broken ankle and still won the year-at-a-time game. Kirk Cousins played it a year-at-a-time. You have different rules. You have different realities. You have different protections, and you're less likely to get a serious injury. That's right. Jamal Adams, 
Now, and, and now the Seahawks have all the risk. That pendulum swung back to the Seahawks. They're carrying the risk now, and they're happy to because they know when he's healthy, they've got one of the best difference makers in football. Yeah, there's a special player, special personality that brings energy to like your defense every day. You know, those are the type of things that Jamal Adams does. So, yeah, it, it makes sense from that standpoint. And you're right. Like, the, the Seahawks didn't want to be handicapped with that in, in this, this, this upcoming year as far as, oh, if we move him here, we move him there. Oh, man, now he's in the box, all those type of things. Uh, th- yes, they don't want to have to deal with that and have that affect game planning and, and, and schemes and all those type of things. And for Jamal Adams – Yeah, I I mean, I'm glad he took the offer on the table and didn't make this any harder. Yeah, for the reasons we've stated, you know, he he is like is he's one of the biggest hitters in the game. I don't know anything to say it. He throws his body around everywhere. He's always in the scrum. And as you know, as we all know that watch football, I mean, when you're down there in the box in the scrum, man, it's one offensive lineman falls on your leg wrong, defensive lineman trips and falls, something like that, and your career's never the same, and you're never the same player. So uh, I think this was the right decision by him, and, and uh, I'm glad he got it. And the Seahawks knew when they traded for him last year they were going to have to do this at some point. I still think they should have done it on the way through the door. They would have gotten him for less overall if they had done it on the way through the door, but they managed to kick the can for a year, get the deal done, and now he's under contract for five seasons in Seattle, and uh, he's got the significant guarantee. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.